think what it says for FRCS for is it's just really orthopedic pathology, which um, um, broadly speaking consists of a, uh, a quite a wide variety of pathologies and will focus particularly on neoplastic uh, pathologies. Obviously, we all remember the, the, the surgical SID. If you see a, an abnormal X-ray or a slide or a, or a, a scan, then you know, you're thinking of causality behind what is what could be causing that issue. Then you always go through your sieve if you're not sure it's either congenital or acquired, um, and they're broken up into lots of different causes listed here. But the primary aspect of this um, afternoon is to talk about neoplastic conditions. Now, if you're anything like me, and uh, when you're sitting in a lecture theatre or a seminar room, uh, and someone's saying something to you, and something that that person says doesn't necessarily make sense, my mind actually just latches onto that unknown and I stop listening to anything else subsequent to that. And given that we're uh, in a, a relatively small group with quite a big volume, I'm more than happy for people to, to put their hand up and <coughs> ask away and ask a question at any point if I say anything that doesn't make any sense. So don't be shy to ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question, as I say. So, um, so in general, neoplastic condition, neo, um, well, pathology, pathos means suffering. So uh, or sometimes feeling is certainly but basically we're looking at um, pathology, neoplastic pathology, uh, neoplastic neoplasm means growth, i.e. cells that are growing in an aberrant or a, an abnormal way. So we're not talking about, for example, spots, which are just growth. These are cells that are increasing in number and morphology. Thankfully, uh, orthopedic, so particularly of the connective tissues, uh, neoplasms are relatively rare. Um, of all the cancers that are out there, a, a primary bone tumor, or a pathology known as a sarcoma of bone, um, only kills about one in um, uh, one fat, well, one in a hundred, sorry, not kills, the prevalence rather is uh, approximately one in 100,000. And for soft tissue tumors, um, or sarcomas, it's three in 100,000. So because of that, they're rare, and because they're rare, they warrant management in a specialist uh, multidisciplinary team setting. So from a descriptive perspective or an FRCS all perspective, well, that's always something to, sensible to put in early. And then of course, then to say something sensible about what it is you're seeing after that is the primary aim when you're, when you're studying the exams. And for those who are not studying the exams, it's really just to be mindful of the fact that every once in a while you will um, see these conditions in an orthopedic clinic. To make a diagnosis of a bone or soft tissue cancer, um, a little bit like in, in breast cancer, we have a diagnostic triangle which consists of see a history and examination uh, initially and then radiology, so plain film radiography as well as an MRI scanning and then uh, the pathology. Now by that I mean it warranted based on the first two features, a biopsy of that tumour or that lesion in order to look at it under the microscope as well as look at its uh, molecular pattern or, or everything. So, if you see an abnormal x-ray that has what looks to be some form of uh, tumour or abnormal growth, um, the question that you'll be presented is, is what do you do? And you say, as we've said already, these are rare conditions, hence warrant management in a specialist NDT. Um, and the reason for that is that it consists of that pe those people in that diagnostic triangle, so the radiologists, the pathologists, as well as the, the doctors treating them. And then should it be a, a, car, a cancer or bone, then oncology and medical and clinical oncologies is therefore required. Then the question then moves on. So, okay, so you do work in the uh, in the bone tumor units. What is your primary aim? Is to Thank obtain you. a. Sorry, I'm casual. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Is to uh, stage the disease locally, and uh, and then stage the disease distantly. It's a nice phrase to use. So you think. So I want to confirm the diagnosis, and then once I've done that, to stage the disease process. Staging consists of local and distant staging. And uh, we'll look at different examples of how we can do that. So in terms of the biopsy of the abnormal tissue, um, when I was at uh, uh, NSHO, uh, uh, often at the uh, district general hospital that I was working at, uh, the interventional radi radiologist would, would biopsy, or the, radi the MSK radiologist would take the biopsy. Less and less now that's done because um, as you take the material, the tuberous material, out of the patient, you contaminate the tract in which that needle passes through. Um, so 
the, the trick, therefore, then, is to, ex <coughs> excuse me, to excise that needle trap when you take out the tumour. Obviously, if it's in an abnormal position, then that can make the excision of that needle trap challenging. And, uh, and then, so that's one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is that certain tumours, um, I'm particularly I'm thinking of things like um, particularly um, soft tissue, hematogenia, so lymphoma, for example, can be quite a, a difficult uh, type kind of cell to look at under the microscope. So it's good if the people taking the biopsy can expedite its process into the pathology lab and then that way increase the likelihood of getting a positive diagnosis. So, so should the specialist unit that treats the sarcoma do the biopsy, it's, um, it's now, yes, the answer to that is yes, it should be. So uh, I wouldn't start saying I would biopsy the lesion and then with that material send it on to the, to the uh, sarcoma. Now, principles of biopsy, so, um, is, as I said already, to excise the biopsy trapped in a, you know, in a cuff. Um, ideally, if possible, one muscle or one compartment muscle that can be excised with the lesion. And in biopsy routes that avoid uh, neurovascular bundles and inflammation of the in the wise tooth, because if you do bleed into that space and form a large hematoma, that potentially is contaminated with the sarcomatous tissue. And also, when um, should you do open biopsies in certain areas where it does bleed, then the drains are not put eccentrically, and they're put in line with the excision that you would use to need to conduct a definitive resection. Um, and as we said already, I mean, I, I don't know if, I, I mean, you know, we're all three surgeons, right? So therefore, it's somewhat thick and education in repetition. So um, once you've got your diagnosed malignant tumor, I'd like to stage the disease locally and distantly. So what does local staging of a bone tumor look like? You get an X-ray of the whole bone, um, as well as a MRI of the whole bone in order to look for skip regions within that. Additionally, it's prudent to, um, if you are considering a, a resection or operative intervention, to look at the extent of that tumour to the local neurovascular structures in a local setting. And then distant uh, uh, staging is a, a bone scan, um, and a, a chest CT scan, not necessarily a chest after the pelvis, and more and more with particular tumours uh, affects him. So what, what's the orthopedic uh, mantra? What are, why are we all here to do? Our job description in everything we do is, uh, in terms of our work, is to save a life, save limb, restore function. I think, you know, in terms of what we do, most of what we, uh, we spend a lot of our time electively restoring function. Obviously in our, in our trauma setting here, there's a lot of limb and salvage work that happens, but really the, the key take home message when it comes to a sarcoma is that uh, particularly with um, high-grade osteosarcoma with Ewing's, is that chemotherapy is the key mainstay of management. Um, in the UK, that, that really started in, uh, at UCH. Um, the oncologists there started, it, it came from, from the US, and then really the historical aspects of it are quite interesting in that if you had a, an osteosarcoma in the, in the UK prior to chemotherapy, 80% um, of patients were dead at five years because even though you could either amputate or lost the amputations back then. And then, but the problem is, is that it's a systemic disease. If you don't manage the, the biology of the disease, then it's ultimately the biology that will, um, in a high grade lesion that will cause the, uh, the patient to die, unfortunately. So, chemotherapy is the mainstay of management. So, when you're looking at an x ray, um, it's the same as looking at a fracture. Start, start by saying what you can see. So, there are some easy, low hanging fruits. So, if, the, if there are patient identifiers on it, which there shouldn't be, but if it's a femur, if it's a tibia, so this is an AP, lateral radiograph of the tibia, which part of it? Is it proximal or distal? And um, is it a mature skeleton or an immature skeleton? Skeleton. Is there a lesion in there? Is it multifocal or is it singular? And what is it coming from? Now by that I mean, is it coming from the bone? Or if it's a scan, is it coming from the soft tissues? And um, I would say generally, principle-wise, it's probably prudent to not say it's cancer uh, or it's malignant. I think when you're looking at a plain film without that diagnostic triangle, it's prudent to call something aggressive or non-aggressive. So until you have your biopsy, until you have your, your um, history examination, until you have your radiology fully all together, then you can call something malignant. Then you, well, you won't be able to convince an oncologist to give chemotherapy or radiotherapy until you've completed that diagnostic triangle. 
So when you're describing a plane frame or a scan, I'm personally a big fan of call, calling things aggressive or non-aggressive. And then we'll talk about some of the um, aspects of that X-ray or scan that can give you clues about whether or something's aggressive or not. Um, so the language that we, we tend to say is, you know, there is a lesion, it is arising from, it appears to be, and it's concerned I refer to a specialist MDT, and I'm aware of the principles of management include a diagnostic triangle that emphasis of a, a biopsy warranted, and then specialist management for the MDT, should a, a diagnosis of malignancy be made, then I would stage that disease locally, as well as distantly, local staging for the system. So you kind of get the pitter patter. So if you do see something aberrant, on a, that looks aggressive or non-aggressive, you, you comb down that conversation into a um, into a dialogue that then comes down to something that we're talking about, no solid management decisions. So um, I don't think we'll go around the room and uh, ask people you know, what they think of this, but this is, so say what you see, so this is a axial T2 image through the tibia. We can, we can say that because we can see that on the bottom right hand, corner in a scatter band that demonstrates that. And it can be difficult sometimes. I mean, this is a, it's an osteocyte of the, the fibula, but it's so large that it's occupying uh, a lot of the compartments. There's even an area that's around the, the, um, the tibia too. So, but again, it's the principle. So this appears to be aggressive lesion. Why do we say that? Well, because it's big and it's, uh, it's heterogeneous. It's destroyed almost the fibula originally. It's occupying a lot of the compartments. And then you would again say, so if this is an aggressive lesion, these are rare conditions that warrant specialist management, and then I'm aware of. And then again, you look at the picture and you comb down your, your conversation into where it is you know that you're talking about true facts. You could say the same thing here. Look, there is a, this is a, a pathological um, specimen that appears to be a resected um, tumour with a skin panel overlying it, with an area of what appears to be fatty tissue and central necrosis. This may well be an aggressive lesion. I would therefore manage this in a, and so you, I kind of hope that you're kind of getting the feel that that's the kind of approach that you take when you're describing um, these images that you would be presented with as something in your mind if you're going down the orthopedic route. Um, it's harsh, but it does happen in the pathology section of uh, particularly of uh, the FRC Sports Exam. You can be given a histological slide. Don't, um, don't freeze up. I would say that there's still lots of things that you can say about this. Um, we all remember, don't know if we do, but uh, this is HD staining of a pathological slide. There appears to be, um, or there is, um, a high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and an active division of cells in multiple stages of mitoses. This appears to be an aggressive lesion. These are rare conditions. But, and then you see what I mean. I'm trying to looking at something, describing its aggressive features, and then talking about how we're going to manage it, how we're going to stage it. And if you're talking about treatment, they're great, done really well. Additionally, in the in the um, uh, pathology section, you can be presented with um, cross-sectional images of uh, whether they be schematic or otherwise. And it's always nice to describe the muscles, what you're looking at. I'm someone who sat in the exam recently. Did anyone get a? Uh, did you get a? a, a Alexia. Alexia, right? Yeah. So. I think two or three areas where you, you're unable to continue the conversation any further, then, then you're flat up. But on one occasion, though, I mean, the examiners aren't there to fail you, but you are there, there to, to um, query your knowledge effectively. So I wouldn't start, if you see a soft tissue lesion, start training to say where it takes origin from. So you know, it's, it's either a soft tissue sarcoma or a soft tissue lesion. I wouldn't start trying to say it's fibro, synovial cell, or any of those, just, just keep it simple. Um, and there are some unique characteristics too. I mean, you can see this is a, uh, the image here is uh, on the left is a uh, T1. Um, there's a bit of a venoid action here, so it's a, an axial T1. And you can see there's a um, 
homogeneous um, soft tissue region that is isolated against the fat uh, that on the right on the T2 stern universally suppresses. So that would be good for a, um, a lipoma. Um, when we were about 20, about a couple of years, a couple of decades ago, these were biopsy bizarrely, but now based on modern imaging techniques, you can you can say that the chrysophase, particularly the signals at that region, returns. That's consistent with a lipomatous tumour. Um, as opposed to this, which is a lipomatous tumour, but it's not homogenous. You can see there are areas within it that on the T2 particularly are bright. So that tells you that there's, um, there's uh, fluid, there's active uh, cellular uptake, there's active action, and so this is heterogeneous. So as opposed to a nice homogenous um, uh, flat signal throughout it, that internal heterogeneity indicates this is likely to be a liposarcoma as opposed to a lipoma. And then, of course, you have nerve sheath tumours or tumours within the nerve, uh, schwannomas or neurofibromas, and, or, uh, and um, they can either be eccentrically or centrally located. And then, um, and they have particular imaging characteristics too. You can have a, um, what's called a, um, a tapered site, so as the, the rest of the nerve grows away. And also, the <coughs> target side. So, there are particular MR features that are characteristic of particular kinds of lesions. So, um, as we said originally, the aim of the operation, the aim of the game that we do is save life, save the physical function. Uh, we can probably save most, uh, most uh, uh, you can take most things out, but do you have a limb off this that works? What does a limb need to, to do to work? It needs to get a blood supply in and a blood supply out. It needs to have a nerve. Um, we have a nerve that works. I mean, like um, like trauma, for example, in the, in the foot and ankle, you can run the foot off for uh, two out of three lessons, so you know, the posterior tibial um, and the perineal tibial tibial is gone, or the anterior and the, and the perineal posterior tibial is gone. We know the posterior tibial is the dominant, and somebody doesn't have other pre existing um, neovascular issues. So, when I was uh, uh, learning about this, this is how we learn these kinds of lesions, and, and I wouldn't recommend it do it that way at all, it's not um, particularly helpful in ways. Um, primary bone tumors have particular radiological characteristics and um, the, I guess the aim of the next part of this is to discuss what those characteristics are that delineate it into either aggressive or non-aggressive lesion and also then the tissue, tissue of origin. And you can say some intelligent things about what you think is making that matrix or making that tumor and that will give you a, um, an indication about potentially what it could be. Um, I would say if you see a, a lesion of pathology in an adult, it's statistically relatively unlikely to be a primary bone tumor. The most likely thing um, that you would see in a, in a lesion in a, on a skeleton in someone who is an adult or over 30, 40, would be a metastatic process. And there are particular uh, um, cancers that do metastasize the brain. And, uh, and it's a, it's a favourite list of consultants in trauma meetings to ask uh, um, SHOs or registrars what they are. And, um, and uh, I'm sure you all know what they are. So, you know, thyroid, kidney, um, uh, gut, lung, and prostate tend to be the ones that, um, that metastasize to the brain. Uh, infection as well, infection on a plane film can, can have um, it's a, a catastrophic. In, in fact, infection over primary and over time can make any. Um, Maybe anything in the next phase. And then, of course, um, a primary bone tumor would be very much more logical. And by that, it would be the same origin in the, in, in the, in the, in the classification of things like um, and whether it was a bone or whether they'd be um, multiple myeloma. So, um, we see this from the plain film, and there are particular, um, there are particular things in the plain film that I'd, I'd like to kind of let your eyes be drawn to. And to describe, so um, I think the, the big, the big aggressive feature of the lesion that's growing in bone is the presence of associated soft tissue mass, um, and also when you, when you're if I'm if I'm an aggressive tumor, I'm secreting uh, interleukin one and six and tumor necrosis factor. So if, if this is the tumor here, this is bone next to it, I'm going to grow right through that, and, and so this is basically what this says in terms of it's growing right through the bone. Aggressive biology. Whereas if I'm not uh, particularly aggressive and I'm growing slowly, then I'm expanding the bone. And as you expand the bone, the bone has time to react to it and move it off. And that's the neo 
cortex, which is a non-aggressive feature. So mm. aggressive features are the soft tissue mass grow through the bone where the bone doesn't have time to grow around it by the absence of a, uh, a, um, a neocortex. And then this thing called wide zone transition. So and by that I mean within the actual bone itself, if something's growing very quickly, it can be difficult to define the edge of the tumor and what is normal tissue because it's an infiltrative growth pattern. There's lysis that's occurring, mm -hmm. the tissue going through the bone. Whereas you know, as, as the bone starts to react to it, it walls off that region. So, I mean, I know it sounds all very descriptive, so it's not a great way to teach it, so we'll go over and look at some pictures. Okay, so this is a um, AP radiograph of the hand. There are multiple within the bone um, uh, lesions, and uh, as well as within the soft tissues that are swelling with the internal areas of mineralization. Uh, if you see, uh, if the x rays are blocked by calcium or blocked by osteoid, then um, you'll see that, that on the film that these areas are in white spots. Mineralization is the umbrella term that, that defines then uh, calcification, which is just calcium, and ossification, which has internal trabeculae within it. If it's not clear on the fine film which one of those are sitting in, then mineralization is the graph black bits, good, good publications to describe that kind of blocking X-ray. So um, there is also an associated uh, This is good for so multiple enchondromas in the presence of uh, um, soft tissue tumors with associated plant disc within these good for these features. And then the conversation will move on to um, okay, so the, within the enchondromas, if, there's, if you have a patient who presented to you with a long standing history and there's an increase in, in size of one of those regions, what do you think that could represent? And there is a conversion rate that's almost guaranteed in the features of those enchondromas to a chondrome. Sarcoma, so sar sarcoma to speed differentiation. Um, and again, the same thing in the sense that this is an apian lateral radiograph of the knee. There are, there's an adult skeleton and there are multiple areas of bone abnormality. And you can see that they're going away from the bone. Actually, some of them are post operative and these are these multiple areas with these, what would be described as champagne flute, it's all very, uh, in a time for gentleman surgeons, um, but the metastatic diaphysal region is widened, so there's bone growth aberrants, and uh, these are osteochondromas. And uh, again, uh, actually primary osteochondroma is the most common primary bone tumor. It's a growth, it isn't um, aggressive, but the cartilage caps on the tip can then be de-differentiated de into uh, uh, chondrosarcoma. So the site's important, and, and as is the age. So um, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't forget the fact that it's, you know, Children, other than um, uh, hematogenous malignancy, bone tumors, sarcomas are common. It's a, not, not common, but if, if you see an abnormal bone growth, you wouldn't say in a child it's a metastatic process. You would do a, a your threshold for describing that as a sarcoma would be, would be somewhat greater. Um, and then what's it doing to the bone? So again, more repetition. So there's a you can see here. So in terms of, I'm going to just say it. There are there are benign and malignant lesions. Of those benign lesions, they're divided into three different groups. There's ones that are uh, latent, so benign latent, and they just sit there. And what, most of our bones started off as cartilage before they became ossified. That's called a cartilage rest, or cartilage, Birmingham calls it a clump of cartilage lesion of uncertain malignant potential. But really, it's just sitting there. It's not doing anything. It's not growing. It's, uh, it's just sitting there. Then you have benign active, and those are tumors that will grow um, and increasing size, and then you've got the line aggressive, and those are tumors that will increase in size and destroy surrounding bone. But that principle we said before about walling off, so you can see how that's a narrow zone of transition. That represents the fact that there is an, um, you can see that the ischial fibula in this child is expanded, and there's a walled off area um, proximal to it. So that's good for a non aggressive feature, as you can see again in the, in the AP view. Um, as opposed to this one, where if someone said to you, okay, so where is the, um, what's the proximal extent of this lesion? So within the bone itself, in the medulla, you kind of you struggle to find where that's stopping. And we can see at the top there's also periosteal reaction. So this is um, an aggressive feature because it doesn't have a narrow zone of transition. It's a wide one. It's 
And uh, the, the Americans call it a geographic region where regions of control around the belt. Obviously, for, uh, um, for us, we, we would call that a region that has a wide zone of transition, as well as a soft tissue mass. So suddenly, it's becoming a bit clearer that this has aggressive features. And then when we say aggressive, we say the expected conditions. And then again, we go down our descriptive sieve. So in our exam, we have a central conversation with the person who's advising us. OK, so uh, just in, um, in terms of, I put this up because um, I want to just reiterate that point to the fact, can you see how the original cortex is <coughs> here? And so this lesion, which is a teenage ectatic osteosarcoma, has grown through it. And it's deposited mineralized tissue outside the original boundaries of that cortical bone because these cells are actively dividing and they're full of mitoses. And sarcoma, the word sarcoma, comes from sarcoma, <coughs> which means uh, fish flesh. So when you look originally transected, these were, these were like white fleshy um, lesions, macroscopic ones. <coughs> and the difference between them, so osteosarcoma, is that these mitotic cells are still have got some semblance of the fact that they were originally took the origin from cells that produce car uh, uh, osteoid. So, um, thanks. This is, this is not that. Thanks on the Z. You brought it. Thanks. 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 That's it, they've given up the ghost. They're in, they're in divisions into central stations. And then, of course, that soft tissue mass. And, you know, we're all keen on, on when you biopsy it, that's the area that's got the cells in it. That's the area that um, doesn't fracture in it as much. And also, that's where you produce the, uh, that will get you your osteoid. So if you can see mitoses, high nucleotide chromatic ratios, and the presence of uh, matrix, so then you know you've got your, your diagnosis. Matrix. Okay, so broadly, oh, okay, we go to matrix. At that stage, or this stage, are there any questions at all thus far? No? Yes? Okay, so matrix. So we, I hope, therefore, have got the number of parameters, soft tissue mass, wide zone transition, absence of the incorporates to give us a non aggressive, an aggressive picture. Then we're going to look at the matrix and what it's producing. So, uh, broadly speaking, we'll Kind of categorize this into four groups as you can see it. So lytic, the x-ray is just going through it. I'm not saying lytic is benign, I'm not saying lytic is um, non-aggressive or aggressive, I'm just saying that it doesn't produce osteoid, or it doesn't produce calcium. So as we saw in that telangiectic osteosarcoma, you can have a lytic lesion that is malignant, but it's, it's containing either just cells or it's containing fluid. Then you have fibrous. So what's happened with fibrous is, um, Crunchy bars, the honeycomb of a crunchy bar is a little bit like a, a section of blue bone. And if you take your thumb and you rub through those, um, I don't know, I was always, when I took a crunchy bar, I like taking the chocolate off the edge and with my teeth between my inside and back, and then trying if I can get a bit of cortex with it. And then I'd be left with that, um, that exposed honeycomb surface. And then what I'd like, used to like to do was just rub it with my fingers. I say so used to. I have a private moment, maybe. <laughs> um, and that's what's happened with the fibrous lesion. We've lost that, um, that individual trabecular cortices. With the, it's, the fibrous tissue has rubbed it away. It's like a, when you feel it, it's like a squash ball when you take it out. And, um, so fibrous kind of blocks the x-rays because we've lost that kind of nice corticular dolly differentiation into trabecular. It's just this rubbed kind of stuff that blocks x-rays. Uh, cartilaginous is is um, it's, the Americans call it popcorn mineralization, where you get a spot and a ring around it. And um, so cartilaginous is, is, has that kind of feature to it, where it's kind of just spots of mineral. And then osseous is there are trabeculations within it, and it, has, it doesn't have that spot, and it has different characteristics. And we'll look at that, things like hair on end, or sun ray speculation, and we'll talk about that too. So we'll go through those four groups. Um, so, lytic. So, lots to say about it. So, it's an AP lateral at the uh, left mm -hmm. in a intra mm -hmm. Um Is it multifocal? <laughs> there are
very same in the distal biopsies metaphysis region, analytic region, this is pretty, uh, that, and what's it doing? So there is a narrow zone of transition, there's an associated expansion in the brain, um, and given these features, this appears to be a non-aggressive issue. Um, I will continue this obviously with diagnostic training and then history examination, and in this instance, further imaging. And that further imaging will enable me to arrive at a, um, <coughs> a, a diagnosis. So, what kind of further imaging? We'll get an MRI scan. And then the MRI scan is good for this now because there are these, you can see that there's expansion of the bone and there's associated edema, but not necessarily a soft tissue mass, as well as multiple fluid fluid levels, which is good for aneurysmal and um, in other words, expansile bone cysts. What an ABC is different from a UBC because a UBC tends to have a single large mini camera or cavity within it, um, whereas aneurysm is more aggressive and the it's when you when you um, window the bone and take these out, it has a thick yellow tan like lining, and um, and the, if you remove that lining, it bleeds a little bit to start with. You get everything out, and then you um, over time that builds up and becomes minimal tissue. Um, this is an AP pelvis and proximal femoral radiograph um, of a mature skeleton, and then there is a singular uh, lytic lesion within the right femoral head neck region with a narrow zone of transition. It's juxta um, articular, eccentrically placed with uh, internal septation. So in an adult, um, so when you use those words, you're basically signposting to the person that you're talking to that. It's, obviously, it's an adult. Adults do not tend to, there are one or two out there, get um, aneurysmal bone cysts, but it tends to be a giant cell tumor of bone. And um, um, again, that's a benign active or a benign, sometimes aggressive lesion, and one example of which can undergo immediate uh, immediate differentiation. But the language that we're using is the same thing, it's, it's, um, it's descriptive, it's uh, narrow zone of transition, neocortex. And then something about the internal matrix. And um, in this view, you can see it's dark and it's, it's, it produces hemosiderin, which is dark on, on um, both T1 and T2. We've seen this radiograph before, um, and there's a little um, MR scan of it. And so we've seen the pathology before too. And it's the same thing it's Spansar, narrow zone of transition, lytic with internal sensation, MR imaging shows multiple fluid fluid levels, good for the bone basis. You see that in before? So that's lytic, and now onto fibrous. So fibrous, or so called ground glass appearance, is the, um, is, the, is the crunchy bar that you have pushed in with your thumb and produced that ground glass appearance. And um, if this is a, these are both actually, you see, you've got the beautiful um, trabeculations here, and um, that distribute lobes, and then within that area, you've lost that trabeculation, that loss of cortico and bone with um, a di differentiation radiologically. And it's, everything's blended in, which is good for these are both fibrous cortical defects. Um, AP radiograph with multiple areas of both lytic and sclerotic areas. And then, you know, could this be a cancer? Well, I guess, you know, you could say it could be, but is it? Well, there's this so called um, Shepherd's Crook deformity that you can see in the, in the left um, femur. And then we look for areas within the matrix, and, and this is, here's a nice example. We've lost our cortex, we've got that kind of ground out appearance here again, lost the cortex. Uh, cortex is still there, but you've got that lovely, well, I say lovely, it's not lovely if you have it, obviously, but um, you've got this, this trabecular that we've lost, and we've, we've ground them away, and you can see that um, that makes it good for a fibrous lesion, so multiple areas of fibrous tissue, or fibrous lesions within the bone are good for. Uh, <coughs> and then on to cartilage tumors. Now, cartilage tumors are um, actually just cartilage. They come from a, a, a range of, of uh, from completely benign latent to tumors that you really, really wouldn't want to have. So, um, listed as you can see from one end of the spectrum to the, the other. What makes them different to um, uh, to the other sarcomas <coughs> is that as yet, as I say as yet, um, there isn't any um, chemo. Uh, 
therapy that is used um, you know, to, to, to treat them apart from the deeper patients, the chondrosarcoma, which it's just given because it's so aggressive, but in terms of survivorship, it has limited effects. And they're not, they're also uh, um, radiological, uh, radiotherapy ones that are um, higher. So, um, staining wise, they have this blue hue to them. So you can see how um, um, ancient stone has got that blue area. And again, it's kind of, uh, please tell me if you think I'm talking nonsense, but <coughs> this spot with a ring around it, so it's so called ring and arc appearance. Um, and then um, again, a blue hue, and then well, this is what we've seen before. And that's a macroscopic um, x ray blue. And um, I don't know if you can say there's a tinge of bluish in there, but um, uh, that's, that's the, the direction of travel. And again, the spots on the ring around it, it's the, what we said before, the, the popcorn of mineralization. Um, <coughs> again, here you can see the spot on the ring. And that kind of, that internal matrix is very good for a, a cart, a treatment of cartilage and spinal injury. This is interesting because there's, um, we kind of lost that. Uh, there was a, um, um, there was a, uh, that kind of appearance in this radiograph and that was being routinely followed up with yearly x-rays and then um, it became more lithic and you can see the bony remodeling around it, I, <coughs> excuse me, the bone is responding to perhaps what could be um, a degree of now uh, increasing growth volume. And when that happens, particularly when you've got a lithic and costume interface, that's, um, that's called thumbprinting and it's thought to represent a terrible increase there. Aggressive features. So, having just said all those things about the differences between uh, non aggressive and aggressive, there are occasionally interesting ones that, that uh, cross the bridge of both. Where, um, yes, you can draw around that, or is that uh, well, not okay? So, that's still a narrow bone transition, possibly. There's a neocortex, there's thickening sections growing slowly with secondary bone reaction. But what's our killer feature of aggression is this, which is our soft tissue mass. So if you've got a soft tissue mass on the face of the bone tumor, that heralds a, that's a big aggressive feature. I hope I'm not building your ear on this one, but I am basic, I have education and repetition. So if you can remember those features, then aggression uh, comes out and you've got a diagnosis uh, which in this case was a, a biopsy. And uh, the macroscopic section shows how it's grown through obliterated the bone, the bone hasn't had much time to react to it at all, and um, uh, actually, yeah, so, so Stan will do, um, the, when, um, which is our local bone, primary bone tumor center, do uh, take a bone scan on these, but I think interestingly don't, because they don't believe in multi-bone chondrosarcoma. I did submit a paper of a year when I used to do this work on chondrosarcoma, but it was rejected because they didn't believe it. Fortunately, she's come to him. And then we're on to osseous. So this is your uh, benign latent um, variety of an osseous lesion, otherwise known as, a, um, as an endosphosis. <coughs> and then, um, as you can see, we've had all these before already, an osteochondroma. Uh, when I used to do this work, I used to describe it as broccoli. So the light green part is the um, bony aspect, of it, and the dark green part is your cartilage aspect. And as anyone knows, who's in the MCQ FRCS4 of life, that um, a cartilage cap is greater than in an adult, a 2.5 centimetre cap, um, heralds the fact that this undergoing a medium cartilage. In the pelvis, um, people feel that it's prudent to take these out anyway because they can increase in size, in size particularly if they're on the inner table, without people knowing them. So if you do pick them up, frankly, that's a good service. So a sequence of images, um, the pain film demonstrates um, an increase in mineralization. See, I haven't, I haven't committed, I haven't said it's, it's definitely calcification or it's definitely ossification, it's just blocking x-rays. So there's, there's a, an increase in mineralization that on a coronal recon demonstrates uh, a, a spot with a ring around it. Now, is this going to be a cartilaginous uh, lesion? Well, I guess this is one of those exceptions of where it's, uh, very dark, so it doesn't contain any water. So 
given those features, the classic history is a, a patient in the age of anything between say, 25 and 45, uh, night pain, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's always there, it kind of doesn't go away, and, um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's made better when, when you take um, uh, ibuprofen. Um, so that's, that's the Steve, Steve. I know it's a really important call, but do you mind taking it outside? And uh, so, prostaglandin. No, it's just that the voice carries, and Greg's just put a bit of effort in. Oh, yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, so, prostaglandin is suppressed by ibuprofen, it reduces the pain, and um, and years and years and years ago, so these, these would eventually burn out. And um, and then, for some of the medical students, uh, we used to, I remember taking, or assisting taking these out. And, and the tibia particularly would be a nightmare. You'd be looking, because they look like the little strawberry, and you'd be there making holes in someone's tibia, and they're looking at, looking at them, and they'd say, is there, is there a, no, we can't find it, just keep going. And taking out wedges of people's bones, and it just felt, it just made you feel really dirty on the inside. Very, very, very satisfying way to spend an afternoon. So thankfully, the radiologist, and it came from the liver, the liver uh, people produced these, uh, radio fre frequency ablation probes, and they drill down into the bone, and then put this probe and microwave it from the inside. And that's it. Then you're stra and strawberries along the peel, not the fine hairs. Yeah, it's really Is it painful as they're doing the radio frequency? Is it like ah? Yeah, so they do, do they do it under GA? Under GA. Right. There's certain areas that uh, that uh, you kind of. So one's here, the speaker was off it here. So this was a, I can't remember what vein this is, in fact, I know this is in my section, but it, this is that, there's skin overlying that, that's the tibia, and you, you would want to cook this a little bit more than, if it was like five to 10 mils, that'd be okay, but if it was like 15 to 20, you'd be there with the probe, like, where you would the radiologist would be. So you'd worry about overlying skin um, during the process, so you get a bit more touch, it's in the touch. And you get a big ulcer when it's supposed to be a back ulcer, and it's like, oh, so fuck this one. <laughs> so, um, and particularly also the spine, the skin, uh, neurological structures, those are the ones that you go in with a cure. And so sometimes you still need to take them out. Um, but, and obviously, if they're larger than the 25 millimeters, don't call them osteo osteo or osteo or osteo blastoma, and uh, they're more prevalent in the spine and tend to be in the posterior. And, Posterior bones. Um, now I put this up just because it's kind of popped in there. And I don't want to do too much kind of tumor, 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 uh, different subtypes. But there is also an area of uh, the back of the, the distal femur. This is a part osteomosteus, I found. And before chemotherapy, these are the patients who survived. They were like grade one, grade two osteosarcomas, and so they didn't necessarily have to get um, uh, chemotherapy to survive. So. That's kind of a, that was a more positive part of the world, and they usually go very slowly, and they tent the vessels over liners, and um, quite rewarding actually. And these are ones that you can do geometric resections on. <coughs> of course, then that these are the classic that grey line represents the cortex, and you can see again the growth that occurs through that, and then as the cells are dividing, it's, it's, it's you know narcotic activity, it's pornography going on, and then behind them they're like depositing or you know, it's, it's a it's an afterthought while they're getting on with each other. Um, an AP lateral radiograph of a patient with spicy has just gone into fuse, and, and we've seen this image before, and you can see that there is an aggressive lesion in the distal femur, it has a wide zone of transition, there is an associated uh, periosteal and the so-called codman's triangle. Codman's triangle, uh, in, I mean, in both adults and children, the periosteum is a rich osteogenic um, area. As the tumor grows from underneath it, um, in the axilla between the undersurface of the periosteum and the outer surface of the cortex, the um, uh, but mineralized tissue is deposited. You could call it bone, but it's it's trying to react to the growth that's in there, and that's the the material that produces the uh, the the, uh, the so-called codman's triangle, which is again soft tissue mass aggressive feature. Um, I would go on to stage this stage uh, stage this lesion following a triple assessment. Uh, both locally and distally, and an MR demonstrates here 
Again, our soft tissue mass with the internal changes in bone. These are all proximal tibial osteosarcomas. Uh, a lot of them have uh, uh, biceps fused, or you can see in some of the soft. But there's, and even though, I guess, you know, it depends. It's difficult when you come at it uh, having been in it. But if you look at it, they, they do, all, they all are different. But there are, some very, there are some common trends between the three radiographs. Those are that there are areas of, um, as we know, aggressiveness, i.e. soft tissue mass. Um, that has a kind of narrow, is it a wide or narrow zone of transition? Difficult to say. Here certainly it's wide. Here certainly it's wide. Is that not abnormal tissue? It may not be. So, um, so they're all, um, they have those features that are common, soft tissue mass, lytic, areas as well as sclerotic areas, wide zone transition. And again, we go through our route, these specialist conditions that want triple assessment or specialist CBT. And then macroscopic, microscopically, again, I'm sorry to present you with so much pornography on, on it in the afternoon, but this is just this is just sex. There's low these cells just going mad here. And you look, there's, a, there's some osteo that's being produced as a by as kind of an afterthought. So that's, that's what you need to, to make a diagnosis, and it's not easy because you want nice big cores of tissue that contain that osteoid, which is why um, you need pathologists here, specialists in being able to um, decalcify them and detect them appropriately. Um, yeah, some, some radiological features that describe osteoid lesions. So uh, the certain <coughs> pair on end, so this is um, a perpendicular outgrowth from the surface of the bone with associated internal is good for uh, aggressiveness. Um, sunburst is whether it's not perpendicular, but it's occurring in a radial front. <coughs> the word uh, cancer itself, I guess, uh, comes from crabs. So uh, when people are sectioning the tumors, the, 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 the crab uh, cores are kind of, they grow out radially, they have these patterns of growth coming out from them. So. That's why it's called that. I mean, that's, that's interesting, the, the origin of the word. And that's what sunburst radiation is. It's radial outgrowth. It's, it's growth of lesion that's beyond um, normal uh, uh, and malignant and then goes on to metastasize. So that kind of sunburst is this disorganized outgrowth. And then, uh, yeah, common triangle we said is the um, deposition of mineralized tissue. This is sequential deposition that's occurred over time. And then here, it's more of a solid deposition associated with the soft tissue mass. And then, um, and what's interesting about um, uh, onion skinning is uh, that it looks aggressive, and certainly that's that's correct. But and one of the reasons I said that just because something look, looks aggressive on a radiograph, it's not a part one to then describe its malignancy, is because. Um, Infection can have an identical appearance. And in fact, when Ewing sarcoma can present initially, I remember a patient in fracture clinic when I was a veg at Barnet who came in uh, with um, proximal femoral, what we thought was osteomyelitis, CRP was up, USR was up, temperature was up. It was an acute, um, it was an acute, um, what appeared to be inflammatory presentation of infection. And um, and so it can muddy the waters and radiologically looks exactly like that. So it, it was Ewing's, but it presented as something that looked a lot like infection. And uh, so it's always worth kind of having these kind of diagnoses in the back of your mind because um, it's all out together, right? Yeah, it's all out together. Um, and then, so in terms of cell cells, in terms of micro microscopic, what it looks like, little, ball, little blue cells dividing actively. Uh, in the presence of osteo. So you could say, okay, come on, this is the thing about scale. If you zoom in on this area here, doesn't it look quite similar to the osteosarcoma that we've shown before? And I'd say absolutely it could well be. Um, there's a greater degree of blueness, describe that at least in the as well as the fact then that you've got the radiology. So um, so clinical radio pathological correlation is the diagnostic triangle that then enables you to arrive at this diagnosis. Ewing's is very much a systemic disease. I mean, it's thought that either on presentation of both Ewing's and uh, certain Ewing's is that even if you have um, 
macroscopic evidence within the lung of disease that they can be, um, they survive the for a criminal because we can treat the disease early and not explicitly be insensitive, and then the basis can end up being the same, which is unlike what's been said. So, um, the second half then is so we described at the beginning what was uh, aggressive and non, and then the second half is the four different categories. And um, so, I would urge you, if you can, to, you know, like, um, I don't know, I, there are some people in this room who may remember. Uh, Skeletal and uh, female, and again, sight and non-sight. Right? So, so kind of look at look at what you're looking at. Look at the film, the full film film. Look at what you see, and then look further into what it is you can see. And you know, the eye doesn't see what the mind doesn't know, all that kind of thing. But if you can kind of go into your matrix and then look at the region that's within it, I'm hoping that therefore you'll be able to give us some uh, more data, or give the person who's asking you more. more on the cell of origin. So uh, I think the video is really coming up actually. So, um, so in summary, your radiology is, is perfect in giving you aggressive and non-aggressive as well as your tissue body origin. But in anyone who's over 30, you do see an aberrant process in pain. I think it'd be uh, prudent to initially present them with, well, this could be um, beetle species put by a metastatic process or infection. Um, and then if there are those features that we describe, then we can go on to start talking about primary inventions or hematological releases. And in those, starting up, start to get the wise over foundation and soft tissue layers. Okay, so uh, questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thanks, man. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, I'm Yeah, what's up? I just want to copy last two weeks' lectures because I wasn't here. Yeah, I think 